Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, I'm not going to complain. Um, I'm not going to complain. I am going to turn myself down a tad, though. I think that should be about right. Hey, Kyle, go ahead and just say hi to everyone again for me. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello, Dr. Nick. All right. Um, yeah, that's uh, I, 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 read, I just redid all the audio. Just redid all the audio. So I might if if Kyle and I aren't quite uh, even, I'm going to work on that. So uh, bear with us on that. Um, but while we do that, Kyle, uh, we're also going to talk a little bit of recruiting. A little bit of recruiting. Um, we're going to take a we're going to take a deep dive into the 2024 class. Um, there's been good news here. There's been bad news here. Um, we talked about the 2024 class on a couple occasions in the past. So this is not our this is not our first trip into 2024 land. Um, we talked a lot about the quarterbacks just a few episodes ago. Um, the name of that episode, I believe, was uh, something about Rayola because Rayola just dis- uh, decommitted and we were talking about who might replace him. We'll get into that a little bit again today. Jared's 10 meter recruiting dive. I do I do I look like a European? Uh, uh, don't answer that. Um, I I don't know what a meter is. And what am I Canadian? Roughly three feet. That's see now I get that the joke is that that's not very deep. All right, Kyle, focus. I, I tell you to focus. Like I yeah I tell you to focus. That's that's just that is literally what I just did. Kyle, where would you like to start? Uh, let's let's just start with the current class here. Let's start with who who's currently committed to this uh, 2024 class. And that is uh, three players, three players, three states. Uh, start with we'll start with the hometown boy, Garrett Stover. Garrett Stover, um, he, he committed last November. Uh, he's a top 200 um national prospect and then you also have ian moore out of indiana a top 60 uh prospect an interior offensive lineman and as well i mean you can't what, what's a recruiting class jared in recent years without a top wide receiver and uh we're talking about jeremiah smith uh out in florida yeah and this is this is just the latest feather um in the in the hat of in the hat of Brian Hartline, who by the way was just promoted the offensive coordinator, um, deservedly so. Uh, Fry, I, everyone keeps saying Fry is now the run game coordinator. I swear he already was. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm clairvoyant. I don't know. I swear he already was. But everyone's like, oh, he's the run game coordinator now, and I was like, oh, no shit. I thought he already was. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, Jeremiah Smith, huge pickup for Ohio State. They said something like that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, Garrett Stover, obviously. Uh, it, by the way, some of you are like, oh, is that his brother? Well, it's it's his cousin. That's uh, we have two Stovers on the team now. They are uh, not brothers, but they are obviously related. Maybe not obviously, but yes, your 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 suspicions are true. They are of the same Stovers. Um, and did you talk about Ian Moore, Kyle? I did. Yes. Cousin brother, same difference. Uh, not in Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, not in Ohio. Um, yeah, those, those are the three commits right now. Like I said, uh, Dylan Rayola did decommit a few weeks back. We talked about that in a lot more detail, um, in, uh, a, a building blocks episode a few weeks ago. So if you want us to get into detail on that, just go listen to that episode. Um, let, let's take a look at some quarterbacks. However, um, let's look at some quarterbacks uh, post Rayola. Where would you like to start here, Kyle? Well, I don't know. It's, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of quarterbacks here to to really look out here. I'm just we'll, we'll just start from the top here, Jared, in our in our list here. We'll talk about uh, a recent decommit here, um, and that is uh, Adrian um, Posse. Pose? Posse. It's either Posey or Posse. 
I don't know which one. We'll, we'll go with I, I feel like both we'll are. Cozy. I feel like both are. I, you could legitimately pronounce that either way. Something you know something about with your name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So he he recently uh, de- decommitted from Auburn. He's a yeah. He's a um, top two hundred prospect, fifteenth quarterback in the twenty four seven composite. Uh, definitely a guy that I think Ohio State is going to look at here. Uh, he's out in the um, out in Florida here. Sorry, I was getting my guys confused here real quick. Um, yeah, out in Florida here and. Yeah, uh, I think this is one quarterback that Ohio State and Ohio is definitely keeping an eye out for. There's there's two there's two interesting possible storylines in how this could possibly relate to Ohio State. One is that I mean he decommitted, and he does hold an Ohio State offer. So I mean I you you we don't need analysis on that one. Everyone understands exactly what all of that means, right? Uh, the, however, there there is a possible more roundabout storyline here that could affect Ohio State. Um, with with Posse decommitting, uh, Auburn is now without a quarterback in their class. And Ohio State and Auburn are currently in a recruiting battle for Air Noland, who is a quarterback out of Georgia. So this is either good news because Ohio State's going to get a quarterback they want in posse or do we recruit against Auburn for quarterbacks uh, in the age of NIL? Uh, nothing's off the table. Um, Aaron Oland, uh I think the crystal balls have him going to Auburn right now, um, but you know, it's not, it's not like a, a bunch of them or super recent, but like I said, uh, the decommitment of Posse could mean possibly that, that Posse is interested in Ohio State. Now he has an Ohio State offer, yada, yada, yada. But it also could be that Aaron Oland is heading to Auburn. Posse got word of that. And therefore, he, you know, he doesn't want to be the second quarterback in the recruiting class. Therefore, you know, so two possible storylines to watch there. Mm-hmm. Yep, no, absolutely. But man, that's a, that's a heck of a quarterback name, though. Air Noland. Yeah, uh, that is a first class. By the way, we have another first class name a little bit later uh, down down the show notes here. But we'll we'll get to him later. Uh, let, let's continue talking about the quarterbacks again. I don't want to go into super detail on these quarterbacks because we we legitimately just did this a couple weeks ago. You can go listen to those. Uh, but just for the sake of name checking, um, Colin Hurley uh, out of Jacksonville, Trinity Christian Academy, more specifically, uh, Jaden Davis out of North Carolina. Uh, J- uh, be a waste at Auburn. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Jaden Davis is a uh, a quarterback that Ohio State was incredibly high on, and he was incredibly high on Ohio State, but... You know, just how things play out. Uh, Dylan Rayola just committed first. And therefore, you know, things between Jaden Davis and Ohio State dried up. Jaden Davis, um, meanwhile, uh, has a lot of Michigan buzz, a lot of Michigan tie right now. Um, so between the job opening up at Ohio State and the coaching situation at Michigan, possibly maybe being in flux right now. Um, that could potentially open up the, uh, the door for Ohio state and Jaden Davis to resume communication and maybe get back in on that. Um, he is of the quarterbacks we're talking about right now, the easily the highest ranked Kyle, where, where, where is he on that? Uh, it says here, he is the third quarterback 19th nationally. Yep. Um, there is DJ, I'm going to say Lagway. Um, another, uh, if you look at the composite, he's a five-star quarterback. He is currently committed to Florida, you know, but it's early. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. Um, Elijah Brown uh, from Santa Ana, California. Um, again, I, I, don't, I am tempted to keep going into details on these guys. We did it a couple weeks ago. Um, if you want more details on the quarterbacks, you can go listen to those episodes. Let's talk about some uh, relatively new names. 
Um, Kyle, I have two different sections in the notes here. One of them are Ohio kids, and one of them are national kids. Where should we go first? Let's stick with Ohio. All let's, right. Let's stick with Ohio here. This is a pretty deep Ohio class, um, especially Ohio kids are always behind in the ratings because our because Ohio uh, the Ohio oh, Athletic Associ Association's garbage, and they actively work to uh, minimize player development and minimize the ability for players to be seen. The the restrictions on the camps, um, the Ohio High School Athletic Association is is that, is that the correct name? It's a long name. Is that am I saying all of those words in the correct order? Um, it's a joke. It's terrible. It sucks. Um, and it does cause a lot of Ohio players one to not develop to their full potential, and two, um, lag behind in these ratings. So you have a lot. That's why you see a lot of Ohio kids uh, come up later in the rankings because because of the the Ohio High School Athletic Association rules, it's very difficult for these players to go and participate in camps is is the long story short of it. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And by the way, they're getting worse in case you're hoping or wondering if they're getting better. Yeah. They are getting worse. So dumb. Uh, let's let's start with the pair of Glenville athletes here. All right. Uh, talking about. Bryce West and uh, Demarion Witten, uh, two two really stellar uh, athletes out in the Glenville High School. Yeah, uh, Glenville. The Glenville pipeline is back. It's a, it is officially back. Um, and so 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 glad for Ted Ginn Senior to get that yeah. get that state title. It meant so much for for the school, so much for the uh, the uh, city of Cleveland. There. Yeah, and. You know, for for him to have left and been able to come back, it's it's fantastic. Um, anyway, uh, Bryce West is a cornerback, uh, top one hundred player, as Kyle pointed out, um, out of Cleveland, out of Glenville. Uh, I, I this feel this feels like an Ohio State gimme. I feel like it is just a if Ohio state does not get Bryce West, he's either a, just not interested, which is not the case. You will sometimes, especially in the Cincinnati area, uh, it seems, or in the Toledo area, it seems have a kid who's just not interested in Ohio state. And if they're just not interested and they're just not interested. So that happens sometimes, but that is not the case with Bryce West. Um, it's nice for Ohio state to potentially go and, and get a, cause cornerback is not a place where they've been recruiting fantastically recently. Um, just feels like an easy layup win right in the, the uh, back door of Cleveland, um, which, you know, that's, that's Ohio state. Second home is Cleveland. Like, uh, you know, it, it just is Ohio state's incredibly popular up in Cleveland. All right. Uh, let's sa see. Same for Demarion okay. Witten. Uh, he's an athlete, six, four, two fifteen. We're not a hundred percent sure where he is yet. Maybe he's a defensive end or maybe, you know, I mean, it's, not not hundred percent sure where he fits yet, but um, a, a, a great athlete, regardless of any of that. All right, let, I'm just going to go down the down the line here. Uh, we're going to start with uh, just recent, yeah, I'm pretty sure recent um, offers to the Armstrong twins out uh, yes. out in uh, Saint Edward. Uh, we've been talking about the Armstrong twins for a while. I don't for, I guess it's just, it's, it's fun to see like a pair of twins and it's just like, Hey everyone, look, there's the right side of the offensive line. Yeah. Gangland. Yeah. St. Edwards does make freaks out there. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's these, these are two guys that we've been talking about, um, out of Lakewood, Ohio for a while. Uh, they officially got their offers. Feels like a slam dunk. There's a lot of good talent. There's a lot of good talent in the um, in the offensive line in, in Ohio this year, which is an absolute godsend. It's exactly what uh, Ohio State needs. Some some homegrown offensive line talent could go a long way for Ohio State right now. Um, 
and you know this the you know I I I know that twins I know that twins hate being like coupled together, but it this but. This, this this does feel like a two for deal. This is a buy one get one free offensive line sale at at uh, Saint Edwards for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until right, Fry uh, can pick up five star tackles, we I have at least one name to watch in the national scope on that. All right, uh, just we have to close on those two. I one hundred percent agree, Spikes. That's yeah. that the, the y- y- you fuck up. This is this is a fuck up if you don't get these two guys. Mm-hmm. That their Ohio State maybe doesn't like their senior seasons and decides that you know sometimes Ohio State some sometimes things sour on Ohio State side. You also have to be like aware of that. Um, but yeah, if, if, if it, yeah, uh, Ohio state can't fuck this up. Yeah. Uh, well, if we're going to stick with offensive linemen, I'll go down and talk about Tommy Ricard out in Hudson high school. Again, just, just like, just like, um, uh, the two Armstrongs, not, not currently rated really high, but, Definitely watch out for those two and uh, and Tommy here to to start moving up in the recruiting rankings. Yeah, um, uh, Tommy, and, and, then the, and then the other one is uh, Mark um, Mark uh, Nav out in uh, Central Catholic up in Toledo. Yeah, uh, I, I I'm not I don't know how to pre- it's N A V E, so I don't I don't know if that's just straight up Nave or if it's could it, it could be Nave. Uh, there's no accent on the 24 seven site, so I don't know, but, uh, yeah, if there, there was an accent, we yeah, try our best. There was an accent, no question. <laughs> as is the rule, as is the rule, YouTube folks, especially cause y'all are the ones that like to roast us for getting names wrong. Don't tell us that we're saying a name wrong unless you're prepared to tell us how to say it right. I will take as a tradition, unlike any other, it's one of our rules gang gangland, which which rule is it? It's one. It's one of the. We will mispronounce names. I forget what number rule it is, but it's in the. It's in the Sloopcast rules. Number All six. I'm asking. Sorry, what? It's number six, Jerry. Number six. All I'm asking. You can criticize us for saying names wrong. That's fine. That's fair. If we're wrong, but help us be right. Don't just be like y'all are dumb. You said the name wrong. Say hey, I mean, you said. I mean- you said the name wrong. You should pronounce it like this. It rhymes with this or spell it phonetically. You know, help like us out. JT Tumilau. Like how long it took us to get that one down. <laughs> Man, and we tried to lean on JTT for a while until he came out and said, I don't like JTT. It's you can call me JT, but JTT doesn't make sense. And it's just like, shit, we can't say JTT anymore. <laughs> All right, You'd think they would have account. phonetic spelling for these kids on the recruiting boards. I have literally asked for that. I've literally asked for that. All right, move, moving on, because there's, there's a lot of names Sorry. here. Uh, Elis Rudolph down in uh, Taft High School in Cincinnati, a edge rusher here. Um ranked 15th best edge rusher currently in the 2024 recruiting class here. Uh, Another names to keep an eye out for is Aaron Scout, excuse me, Aaron Scott out in Springfield. Uh, Another offensive lineman I I, uh, missed out on here, Jared, is William uh, Satterwhite out in Archbishop Hoban in Akron. Yeah, yeah. Um, Again, all of... uh, all of these are, are great pickups, um, especially for in-state kids. And as we said, the in-state kids always are behind in the recruiting rankings. Um, but you you could build a really nice recruiting class out of purely Ohio State offensive linemen. Now, there is, a, you know, unfortunate reality that Michigan's already picked up a couple of them. Um, but you, you move forward uh, and that's, you know, Things could change and guys can be flipped and coaching changes, but you you have to acknowledge that Michigan's doing a really good job recruiting and developing offensive linemen right now. Like you just you you can't like I I I'm the first guy to be like fuck Michigan, but 
reality is reality. Uh, they are doing better than Ohio State right now at recruiting and developing offensive linemen. Mm, yeah. Weird so- how they got better <laughs> at that when Warner left. <laughs> So cur- so currently in the top 20 there's only there's three Ohio kids currently committed to schools and that's uh, Stover to Ohio State who's sixth uh Tavion Galloway tight end uh out of Chillicothe or uh, out committed to LSU and then you have Luke Hamilton the tackle from Avon as Jared mentioned it's um heading on up to the uh to the team up north. Yeah, and uh there there's another offensive lineman that is leaning heavily towards Michigan as well. That would be uh Ben Roebuck. Yeah. Out in St. Edwards. Yep. Which is yeah, as, uh, yep, same if you if you ever if you guys are taking notes at home, yeah, he is a teammate of the Armstrong twins. Mm. And he is a heavy Michigan lean right now. Yeah, and, and the last heavy Michigan lean is uh, Brian Brian Robinson out in Fitch High School out in Youngstown, who's a edge rusher who's um, heavily leaning towards Michigan as well. Yeah, the M- Michigan has been emboldened and they are recruiting in the state of Ohio again, which they weren't doing for a long time for some reason um, under Harbaugh. But they are they're back in the game starting 2024. Uh, one more Ohio kid to mention, um, Sam William Williams Dixon, Sam Williams Dixon, uh, running back out of Millersburg, Ohio, uh, I believe picked up an offer this week. Uh, if you yep. look at the recruiting numbers, the recruiting rankings, they aren't strong yet, but you know, I'm not going to say it for a fourth time. We know why, but I, if Ohio state's throwing a scholarship offer at him, then you have to you have to trust that they like what they see out of uh, Sam Williams Dixon. Mm-hmm. All right, I think those are all the Ohio kids. Let's let's move on to the na- <clears throat> to the national kids here. All right, so we're gonna start we're gonna start with one of actually a lot of these are really top <laughs> top recruits here, but we'll start with a. Uh, um, I, I think the days. Just real quick, I think the days of Ohio State building a decent base in state and then plucking high four star, five star guys nationally are coming back. A lot of that has to do with NIL. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Ryan Day was already doing that way more than Urban Meyer was doing it. Um, so this is s- sort of a. If you're looking for stability in recruiting right now which I think everybody is recruiting's chaotic right now because of NI because NIL is completely unchecked at the moment. I am pro NIL. I am happy for the players to get NIL, but the NCAA is completely dropped the ball as far as regulating it and enforcing the regulations they have. This is not a secret. So if you're looking for some stability, Look in your own backyard. And I think Ohio State's doing it right now. And I think it's smart. And it helps that the 2024 class in the state of Ohio is pretty damn strong. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the national ones here that Ohio State's targeting here is uh, Josiah Trader uh, is a um, kid out in Hollywood, Florida. Wide Uh, receiver. Yep. One of the best, best out there currently 11th best ranking and the second best wide receiver which Ohio State has the best one if you just heard uh, moments ago and Kyle what else do they share in common despite being the number one and number two wide receivers in the country um they're both in Florida keep, keep, <laughs> keep, keep zooming in they're both five stars keep zooming in Same high school, uh, Kyle. Oh, yes, they are same, the same high school. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the same quarterback sorry, I, I like says. The loca- sorry, I was looking at the location and one said Opalock, Florida. And then this one said Hollywood, Florida. I'm like, what, 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 are, you, what are you talking about here? <laughs> does it really? It does. Hollywood yes. and no, both of mine say Hollywood. I don't know what you're looking at. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't is- matter. Yeah. Uh, 
they're they are both um that is weird that it says something different there we'll have to talk about we'll have to we'll have to austin's not here austin's in that general area of the country we'll have to have to ask him why that is is like that but yeah uh both out of madonna prep uh in florida um for what it's worth, I trader, I think, is already a, a heavy Ohio State lean. The fact that um, his teammate has already committed to Ohio State uh, doesn't hurt. <laughs> doesn't hurt. Um, Trader's a heavy Ohio State lean. I, I feel pretty good about uh, Josiah Trader ending up with Ohio State. All right. It's us uh, and a and for Trader, Gangland says. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I still feel good. I still feel good. Mm -hmm. Elijah rushing. Talking about names. Yeah. Gary, that fits right with their position. Now, hold on. Elijah hold rushing. on. Hold on. Don't say anything. Chat. What position does Elijah rushing play? Well, let's, let's see if they respond. Let's see if they're brave enough to, to respond. Uh, D end, D end. Spikes is typing. Spikes is typing. No pressure spikes. I'm waiting on you. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Rusher D E. Yep. Uh, Elijah rushing. Uh, by the way, I was expecting at least one of you to say running back. I'm a little bit disappointed because you could have been either. With a name like Elijah rushing. You could be a defensive end or a running back. And it's, it's like all name. And he, he's an edge rusher. So we're good. I know you were fishing for running back. Yeah, that's fair. Cause I was absolutely doing that. <laughs> I was trying to set someone up so I could not so fast them, but y'all are too quick. Felt like a trap. Yeah, it. You, you're right. I, I underestimated you guys, and I apologize. Um, but yeah, Elijah rushing. Uh, top according to the twenty four seven Sports proper rankings, top uh, pass rusher in the twenty twenty four class. Um, the composite has him at third. Um, he's out of Tucson, Arizona. Uh, a place that Ohio State has had uh, good recruiting success in um, as of late. Uh, that being said, it feels like some Pac-12 teams, some of whom are future Big Ten teams, um, are, are sort of on the way back. So sniping kids out of California and Arizona uh, is going to get a little bit tougher. Um, is there Arizona becoming a new pipeline? Maybe. Um, but again, like USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington becoming, you know, good, consistent long-term programs is going to hurt Ohio State's chances in that area. Um, or at least they could hurt Ohio State's chances in that area. It's yet to be seen. It definitely will be on the offensive side. I feel like if you're a West Coast player who's an offensive juggernaut, it's going to be really hard not to look at USC. If you're a defensive player, eh. Maybe. And of course, when we're talking nationally, Jared, um, go. We, there's always that player, at least a player out in IMG Academy. Yeah. yeah. Here we're, we're talking about uh, defensive lineman David Stone, uh, top 10, both in the proper and composite over at 24 7 Sports. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ohio State obviously has a, a, a good track record at IMG. Um, if you're a top, if you're a top program in the country, you have to have a good track record at AMG. It's, it's, you have to, um, but yeah, uh, as, as Kyle points out, um, he's a defensive, they just have him marked as a defensive lineman, um, which typically means he's, uh, either a big defensive end or a small three tech, uh, is typically what that means. Um, but one of the top players in the country, uh, six, four, two seventy. Uh, so, you know, Maybe he's a three tech defensive end. Maybe he's a strong side or excuse me, a three tech defensive tackle. Maybe he's a strong side defensive end. It just, you know, kind of depends upon your system and uh, how he performs. Yep. All right. Um, sticking with the state of Florida here out in uh, Tampa, uh, Solomon Williams. Uh, here's another defensive end here. Not, not really recruited or not recruited. I'm not really ranked high in the 24 seven composite, but he got, he got the Ohio definitely, state definitely offer guy that Ohio state likes. Yeah. He, he got the Ohio state offer. So 
We need Florida defensive backs. We just need defensive backs. There's literally nothing magic about the water in Florida that makes better defensive backs. I know they have like a competitive seven on seven and that helps to develop a lot of talent and Ohio refuses to do it because the Ohio Athletic Association sucks. Um, but there's literally nothing magic about the water in Florida. You just need to go get your best defensive back talent you can get, period. I don't care if they're from California. I don't care if they're from Cleveland. I don't care if they're from Arizona, Alabama, Texas. I don't care. Mm -hmm. They do all get right. to play all year yeah. round. Yeah. They do. Yep, they do. All right. Uh, Darian Mayo out in Maryland here. Uh, another D uh, edge rusher here. Uh, again, kind of like uh, Solomon Williams. Not a not a highly rated guy currently right now, but definitely a guy that Ohio State really likes. Really big, really tall guy. 6'7", 247. Uh, yeah. Definitely a guy that can really um, disrupt um, – disrupt the quarterback with his wingspan. That's insanely tall defensive end. That's an insanely tall defensive end. That's, I, I don't that's, that's, that, that's my analysis. That's, that's what I got. Kyle. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, just going to name the last two here. Uh, Danny Akoi. Uh, for some reason, I keep wanting to think of the uh, the former Chiefs running back, uh, Christian Okoye. Yeah. I don't know if they're related. I'm not sure if they're related or not. No idea. Uh, Danny Okoye out in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, an edge rusher that Ohio State has offered, as well as Williams Nwanri. Uh, Nwanri? Yeah, I'll go with Nwanri. Um, one of one of the best defensive linemen in the country, um, 17th in the in the composite and the third best defensive lineman. Yeah. Um, back to Okoye. Um, and I'm pulling this from Buckeye huddle, uh, from, from our, uh, friend of the show, uh, once guest star, um, Alex Gleitman, uh, uh again, Danny Okoye. Um, I, I, uh, uh, in our Scarlet and Grade episode, eh, I forget when it was. I took Ohio State fans to task for being shitheads and for being narcissistic and for being partially responsible for scaring off recruits and everyone. No, no, people didn't respond kindly to that, if I'm being honest. They didn't respond nicely to me criticizing Ohio State fans. Um, here is a quote from Danny Okoye. Um, talking offer did note something interesting. Quote, it's cool, but their fan base is eh. Now. As a direct quote from Danny Okoye, it might be your first instinct to be defensive and be like, well, fuck him. I know well, you uh, you you got to but uh, just be mad at Danny Okoye for saying that. I mean most places are like that. Well, Danny Okoye seemed to very specifically point out Ohio State and by the way go I don't have this article in front of me so you can go to the dispatch and read it yourself. Henderson was uh, greatly affected and almost transferred because of people being shitty to him and saying shitty things about him on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And Okoye is also responding to what he is seeing on Twitter. And, and you may y'all who are going like, out there and acting like dickheads towards players on Twitter. You are chasing away recruits and you're also tr uh, chasing away players who are already on the damn team. So when you're harassing current players because they didn't do the exact thing the way you thought they should have done it. And by the way, Henderson was hurt. 
Are we talking about Trey now? I'm talking about Trey, but I'm also talking about Danny Okoye, and I'm also talking about uh, some other recruits who may or may not have decommitted uh, partially because of the fan base. We're committed elsewhere because of the fan base. Y'all who are going out there and being like, Trey Henderson sucks. Fuck Trey Henderson. Not knowing that he had uh, it was plantar fasciitis, I believe he had. But you're just out there shit talking him on Twitter. Not only does Henderson see that, so do the recruits. And by the way, when you're out there calling for Coach Day's job and putting Coach Day's job at least within the eyes of young, impressionable teenagers on Twitter, putting his job in danger, you're destabilizing the perception of the program and you're making the fan base look bad. And they're saying, gee, do I want to go play for that fan base where if I miss a tackle, everyone's going to shit talk me on Twitter for the rest of the year? So, we don't kick people out of the Discord too often. Not like actual fans. We, we kick bots out of the Discord. We, we spammers out of the Discord. Um, we kick uh, sometimes like f- trolls from other fan bases in the Discord. We, we kick those people out. But of like people who actually show up and are actual Buckeye fans and want to be a part of the Discord community, the number one reason we kick people out is because they shit talk players. It's in our Discord rules that you're not allowed to shit talk the players. You can criticize them. There's a difference between a fair criticism and being a belligerent asshole. The number one reason we kick actual, like, potential members of the Discord community out of the Discord community is because they're being an asshole towards players. We don't tolerate it. And I, I would have thought, I would have hoped that the Harry Miller story would have helped right some boats in that situation. I guess fucking not. The 1% of you who are assholes are hurting the program. You're hurting the program with your fucking actions, with your words, with your social media presence. You're hurting the program. You are hurting the thing you love. All right, let's 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 get back to talking about the players here, Jared. Uh, they needed to so hear it, Kyle. We, they needed to hear it. I know. I know. Uh, Danny Okoy, uh, you may you may look at his, you may look and like, oh, he's not even ranked. Why, why the, why the heck is he, why the heck is he, um, uh, why is Ohio State looking after him? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you with Ohio State giving him an offer, that is his 25th division one offer. He's been getting a lot of them recently, including, including some, um, if I'm looking real quick here, including, uh, Alabama, Miami, TCU, Michigan. He's, he's getting, he's getting, um, offers from the big time, uh, universities as well too. And then if you look at another site here, they have him as one of um, a top 200, around 100 um, in their recruiting class as well, too. So this might be this might be the um, the gym um, in the desert there, Jared. Gem in the desert. Or the diamond in the rough. OK, <laughs> listen, <laughs> however, however, desert, you wanna, however you want to work. Deserts are also rough. I'll take it. I mean, it's a sand trap, right? Mixed golf analogies. I like it. Um, and we already talked about the Missouri defensive lineman. Yeah, I, mean, I mentioned him. Okay. Yeah, one of one of the best in the in the country. There. Uh, I mean, you're, if you're Ohio State, you, you got to offer. You you just got to offer. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um. I thought for sure I had another name to bring up. Maybe I'm crazy. Um, Did I just not put him in the notes? Am I crazy? Am I stupid? Anyway, 
Uh, we move forward. We move forward. That's what we do. We move forward. Um, those are just some of the names. There are a bunch more names. Uh, it, it's super early in the process. Um, Ohio State is throwing some scholarships out there. They're refocusing in on the state of Ohio, which again is not a new thing necessarily. Ryan Day has been way more Ohio focused in his recruiting than Urban Meyer ever was, which is ironic because Ryan Day is the one that's labeled like not the Ohio guy, but he is recruiting the state harder than Urban Meyer ever did. Um, yes. And it seems at least early in this 2024 class that they are doubling down on that. They're going to double down on the state of Ohio. And of course, like I already said, the fact that this is a pretty good Ohio class is obviously incredibly helpful uh, with, with that situation. Um, Kyle, anything else? Do you have anything else you want to cover recruiting wise? Um, I think that, I think that's good. I think that's a good, um, good way to tip your, uh, to tip your toes into the, into the water here, get to know some names here, both in state, some out of state here. I think, I think this is a, uh, a good start here for our listeners. Yeah. Um, probably notable. Uh, I don't know if this counts as, I guess it counts as recruiting. Um, defensive back Jaheim Singletary, which if you've been following Ohio state recruiting, um, was once committed to Ohio state, uh, ended up committing to Georgia instead has entered the transfer portal. I uh, I don't know what, uh, if the relationship was <laughs> maintained through that decommitment or not. Um, but we'll see if, uh, Ohio state would love, I, Ohio state would love to have his talent again. I don't, I don't know. Yeah how things went after the decommitment as far as if there's still an open line of communication or not. Um, sometimes those breakups go okay. And sometimes they don't um, also leaving Georgia uh, is offensive tackle. Jacob hood uh, also entering the transfer portal. Um, I, I do know that there was a tragic event this past weekend uh, regarding an offensive lineman and in, in Georgia um, who was uh, he was killed in an, automobile accident um so i don't know if that if or how that uh, affects jacob hood um but i and i don't know because it's quite frankly not important right now obviously there's you know two people lost their lives and that's way more important and i'm sure everyone at georgia will worry about the football portion of that further down the road um yep. but obviously there's uh that the equation has changed uh, as, as far as the offensive lineman at Georgia goes. So, um, yep. but two potential names to keep an eye on uh, Georgia loses two players in the positions uh, Singletary and hood. That is um, that I don't just, just want to point out. I'm talking about Singletary and hood. I'm not referring to losing a player in regards to the young man who lost his life. Um, I wasn't just, I want to make sure everyone knows I wasn't being like that trite about someone dying. Um, but hood and Singletary currently in the portal, two positions that Ohio state needs to address the most. Um, I don't think they had much of a relationship with hood, but they absolutely had a relationship with Singletary during the recruiting process. So uh, a couple guys to, uh, to keep an eye on, uh, as, uh, I'm sure Ohio state has already reached out to see if they're interested or not. And by and uh, before I think we'll kick over into Kyle's corner here next. But before I say that, yes, C.J. Stroud has not declared for the to to the NFL draft yet. No, I don't think it means anything. No, I don't think he's coming back to Ohio State. Yes, I am still completely sure he is going to the NFL draft. No, he's not playing with your emotions. He's not stringing you along. Not everything is about you, Ohio State fans. <laughs> not every liked Did tweet, <laughs> not every liked tweet, not every timeline is a coded message to Ohio State fans. 
He's just a young man figuring out his shit. As far as his agents are concerned, that's the rumor I heard anyway. It's fine. He's not, it's not about you. Ohio State fans, it's not about you. Um, he's not coming back. He's going to the draft because of course he is. He's, he could be the first overall pick. He could be. I expect the, I expect the Bears to trade out for what it's worth. I don't think I don't think the Bears are going to pick him, just so we're clear. Um so yeah, that's that's it. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, we have three Buckeyes heading to the uh as of right now, we have three Buckeyes heading to uh this year's senior bowl. Zach Harrison, Dewan Jones, and just announced Ronnie Hickman. There you go. Um, what's up with um, JF1? The, uh, Nothing. What's that? No, I, I was just reading chat. Um, Zach asked, what's up with JF1? Nothing. No, I'm just saying, I don't think the Bears will... I think I think the Bears are going to trade out. That's all I mean. I don't think the Bears want a quarterback, but I do think a quarterback will get picked over one. Uh, picked overall number one, because I expect the Bears to trade out. That's, that's all mm -hmm. I meant. Yep. And the basketball team is just, well, sucking. Why, why, it, why it, does it, it's, it's been a terrible, it's been a terrible January for them. I feel, I feel like every January, I feel like we've been, yeah, I feel like this is just deja vu almost every year. January, no, so the new year comes De, around. Deja, and vu, just deja vu is the phenomenon of thinking you've seen this before, but you actually haven't. This isn't deja vu. This is a fucking pattern. This is this is just a pattern. It has been two full weeks without an Ohio State win. Two oh, weeks. but Kyle, Kyle, I'm sure they played amazing competition every single one of those games, right? They huh? played Rutgers. Forget but, Rutgers. But, but, I mean, I mean, but but I'll give, I'll give Rutgers credit. They did. They did. Rutgers beat isn't. Recently. Rutgers isn't bad. It's it's the no. it's the other. Is the previous loss Minnesota that that was of embarrassment? Oh, that, that, that was terrible. That was that's an embarrassment. That was, was you, you don't awful. They no no. There's no energy. There's no energy in the in this team that I've seen in recent games. Um, not, not enough hustle going on. Defense is kind of at times feels like a just minimum effort here. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just just utter crap. And all of these games have been winnable. Like they lost a four by four points to Rutgers, three to Minnesota. They should have won. Um, they lost by seven to Maryland. They lost by two to Purdue there. The, the, the games they should have won, but they just flat out just been crap. Absolute crap. I've been a Holtman supporter and a Holtman apologist um, for a long time. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see this team improving. Not, yeah, not what I've I seen saw, the past four games here. Oh, it's just not. Yeah. Uh, have, yeah, I, I did see that Alabama news. Um, yeah. Alabama basketball player uh, arrested, was, charged. Was he actually charged? Okay. He's charged. charged. Yeah, he's charged. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's, I don't know anything about it. I'm not going to speak on it. I the, That news popped like right before we started recording. I don't know anything about it. I'm not going to speak on it, but if they actually charged him, that probably means they have something, but that doesn't mean he did it either there. That's an incredibly vague take on that because I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. That's it's breaking uh, news. So, so their next, so their next two games here, Wednesday, they, um, on the road to Nebraska and then home against Iowa this Saturday. It doesn't, it doesn't get easy. It doesn't get easy. You got You got to find wins here. You got to find wins. Cause like what's their signature win so far this year? I don't know if you can have it. <laughs> they, their signature wins are some really nice win here. Kyle, their signature wins are some really nice losses. They've had some really yeah. nice losses this year. 
Yeah. That's a, a really nice good loss to, Duke, to Purdue. Nice loss to UNC. A nice really loss nice to loss Purdue. to UNC. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 like it's kind of like being one of the Mississippi schools in in football, where their best wins are their losses. Oh, why yeah. why, why is Ole Miss ranked so high? Well, they didn't lose that bad to Alabama. <laughs> That's why I said football right now. We're fucking Ole Miss. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's all I got. Quality losses. Thank you, Zach. That's the phrase. Um. Yeah. First off. Uh. So yeah, we're gonna we're going into plugs here. I just want to welcome Kyle back. Kyle took a few episodes off. He was on assignment. Everyone say hi to Kyle. Welcome Kyle back. Everyone. Uh. In the YouTube comments, just just say hi, Kyle. And. Um, and if you know, you know, so if you know, don't guess. In fact, I only want the most wrong, ridiculous answers you have in the YouTube comments. Uh, why was Kyle gone for several episodes? Again, I am not looking for accuracy here. I am looking for comedy. I I want the goofiest explanations you have in the YouTube comments about why Kyle, uh, missed the last several episodes. So that's that's what I want you to put in the YouTube comments this week, Kyle. We're we're, we're gonna, Austin and I accidentally started a thing where we're going to uh, prompt the YouTube people to leave comments uh, with a question. <laughs> he was binging Zach. The YouTube comments. The YouTube comments. Not not the Discord <laughs> comments. The YouTube comments. Uh, yeah. So Discord. Discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, we're a fun community. We don't allow you to shit talk players. So if that sounds like the type of thing, uh, that you want to do, don't join. Uh, if it sounds like the type of place you'd like to join because we're, uh, adamantly anti-toxic asshole, then come join. We try and keep a clean discord server. Um, uh, YouTube. Yeah. We already did the YouTube thing. Um, leave a comment. Where was Kyle? Why was Kyle missing for several episodes? You might miss a few more episodes. We don't know. Listen, let us know in the YouTube comments. Where's Kyle been? Where in the world was Kyle? It wasn't San Diego. It's just, that's, that's a hint. That wasn't San Diego. <laughs> uh, Tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by the Dopamines. Uh, they're a punk band uh, out of Cincinnati, I believe. So um, I'll give coordinates. You don't have the coordinates. You could get, Gangland, I know you could get coordinates at least somewhat accurate to my house. You, you, you know, like the state for Kyle. I dare you to get within 40 miles. 30 miles, 30 miles. All right. Um, that's it. That's the end of the show. Why, why do you say, oh, shit spikes? First off, I haven't looked at those coordinates yet. They're not accurate. It's probably a generic coordinate. I don't care. He just dropped numbers in the chat. Whatever. I'm not impressed. Look at them, Jared. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at them. That's not that bad. That's not Nevada, Jared. I, I saved you some time. Out in Nevada. Oh, okay. Is it what? Is it Area 51 or something? It's a known marked area. It's Area 51, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I believe this. I believe that is Area 51. All right. Um, no, the, of all the people in the Discord server, Kyle is only the second. Maybe third most likely to be at Area 51. Uh, so with all that being said, uh, once again, the dopamines. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music. Of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, uh, punk band out of the Cincinnati area. They're called dopamines. <laughs>